Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim. Today we will discuss about hypercoagulability state and its clinical application. Thank you for watching. Let's suppose that you have a 45 year old woman develop deep vein thrombosis of the leg and pulmonary embolism. Of course, you have started anticoagulation therapy. Now, you wonder if she needs to test to find out whether she has inherited hypercoagulability conditions or not. If she has one of the following conditions, the chance of having hypercoagulability condition is high when she has no provocation or weak provoking factors such as minor surgery or contraceptives or short immobility. Or when she's a young, less than 50 old age with a strong family history. When she has recurrent deep vein thrombosis. When the thrombosis occurs in an unusual site such as splanchnic or cerebral artery, or cerebral veins, you suspect not only hereditary thrombophilia, but also underlying myeloproliferative neoplasm or proxismal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Splanchnic vein includes portal vein, mesenteric vein, hepatic veins. Myeloproliferative neoplasm includes uh, essential thrombocythemia, polycythemia vera, myelofibrosis, and the chronic myelogenous leukemia. Patients with proxismal octonal hemoglobinuria, PNH, develop red urine due to uh, hemoglobinuria released from intravascular hemolysis of red blood cells caused by complement destruction. It also associated with aplastic anemia. This patient is young and has a family history of venous thrombosis, so you decided to run the test for hypocoagulability state. What are the known hypercoagulability uh, uh, conditions? Antithrombin or antithrombin-3 deficiency, protein CNS deficiency, factor V Leiden, or can be detected by APC resistance test, activated protein C resistance, prothrombin 2210A, antiphospholipid syndrome, uh, uh, which encompasses the uh, lupus anticoagulant syndrome. Is a potent clotting factor and antithrombin blocks the uh, thrombin activity uh, and the factor 10A. So antithrombin deficiency causes hypercoagulability uh, state because antithrombin is not available to block the thrombin strong coagulation activity. Antithrombin deficiency can be either inherited or acquired. Acquired antithrombin deficiency is important clinically. Patients with a liver disease develop antithrombin deficiency because antithrombin is synthesized in the liver. The uh, chemotherapy drug aspiragenase inhibits the synthesis of antithrombin deficiency. This uh, aspiragenase is used for the acute lymphocytic leukemia. Patients with nephrotic syndrome lose antithrombin, which is protein, uh, to, into the urine. So the uh, nephrotic syndrome is associated with a hypercoagulability condition. In sepsis, DIC, or during cardiopulmonary bypass, the antithrombins are consumed excessively, resulting in antithrombin-3 uh, deficiency. When venous thrombosis patients requires unusually high dose of heparin uh, for treatment, you suspect heparin resistance. Heparin resistance is usually caused by underlying antithrombin-3 deficiency because heparin needs antithrombin to work on. So without antithrombin, heparin cannot work. For patients with heparin resistance, you stop heparin and uh, give agatroven, uh, which is the uh, direct thrombin inhibitor. Now we also have recombinant antithrombin uh, to replenish the uh, sufficient antithrombin amounts of the body. High dose of low molecular weight heparin was used successfully to treat the patient with heparin resistance. Protein CNS are natural anticoagulants inhibiting factor V and factor VIII. Protein C is activated to uh, uh, activate protein C, APC, by protein S. So protein C and the protein S work together uh, in inhibiting factor 5A and the factor 8A. Therefore, the deficiency of protein C and S 
result in hypercoagulability condition, increasing the risk of venous thromboembolism. Factor V lidin is related to protein C. We know the activated protein uh, C, APC, inhibits the factor V, but if the factor V became mutated, APC will be unable to block it, and the unstoppable factor V continues the uh, continues on the clotting process, resulting in hypercoagulability state. Factor V lidin is a mutated form of factor V. Uh, caused by single nucleotide polymorphism due to missense substitution of guanine to adenine at the gene F5. Therefore, APC resistance, activate protein C resistance, most likely indicates the factor V Leiden. So the diagnosis can be made by uh, either APC resistance assay test or direct factor V Leiden uh, test. Factor V Leiden is the most common hereditary hypercoagulability disorder among Caucasians, occurring in 5% of Caucasians. It's less common in Hispanic Africans and very rare in Asians. The risk of uh, venous thrombosis even goes up high, higher when they take the estrogen containing oral contraceptives or during pregnancy because of the hormone level is high or when patients smoke. There is also small risk increase uh, of miscarriage and uh, preeclampsia. Prothrombin G2210A is a mutated gene of prothrombin by single nucleotide polymorphism. This mutated prothrombin gene, G, prothrombin G2210A, gains function. And now this mutated gene can increase the prothrombin synthesis by 30%, resulting in hypercoagulability uh, states. It's more common in Caucasians, rare in African Americans. Most inherited hypercoagulability conditions have autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. So uh, one of the parents carry the gene, half of the children will be affected. Lupus anticoagulant is actually not an anticoagulant, it's a, uh, a procoagulant, increasing the risk of thromboembolism. So it's a uh, misnomer. It's an acquired hypercoagulability condition. Then why it was named as an anticoagulant? It's because lupus anticoagulant is an antiphospholipid antibody. In vitro test, this antiphospholipid antibody binds the uh, phospholipid, the test reagents for testing the uh, clotting, especially for intrinsic pathway. We know that any inhibition of the intrinsic pathway coagulation cascade causes prolonged PTT. So patients with lupus anticoagulant almost always have prolonged PTT. That's why the name is an anticoagulant, as lupus anticoagulant causes abnormally prolonged PTT, like the hemophilia patients having prolonged PTT. But in vivo, inside our body, the lupus anticoagulants bind phospholipid membrane of the me uh, platelets, activating them, causing platelet aggregation and the thrombosis. So it is a hypercoagulability condition. About 10% of uh, people having lupus anticoagulant develop a venous, a venous or arterial thrombosis. And a uh, few percent of general population have uh, lupus anticoagulant without any clinical significance. The lupus of the lupus anticoagulant is also a misnomer because majority people with uh, positive lupus anticoagulant have no lupus, and only a small portion of lupus patients have a lupus anticoagulant. Antiphospholipid syndrome, APS, is an acquired autoimmune disorder uh, caused by antiphospholipid antibodies. It's strongly associated with a high risk of thromboembolism, uh, a uh, condition of uh, hypercoagulability. Because the antiphospholipid syndrome encompasses other antiphospholipid antibodies in addition to the lupus anticoagulant, we can say uh, lupus anticoagulant coagulant syndrome 
is a part of the antiphospholipid syndrome. For diagnosis, patient must have clinical signs of arterial or venous thrombosis, which include the, uh, uh, the, the thrombosis and or pregnancy complications such as fetal loss, uh, premature birth, or mis multiple miscarriages. And uh, also, patients must have antiphospholipid antibody uh, detected by lab test. There are three tests to detect antiphospholipid antibody in antiphospholipid syndromes. Of course, the lupus anticoagulants and the cardiolipin antibody and the beta-2 glycoprotein-1 antibody. Again, the uh, diagnosis of antiphospholipid syndrome requires uh, both clinical criteria and the laboratory criteria. At least one of the two clinical criteria and at least one of the three uh, laboratory criteria must be met. Clinical criteria includes vascular thrombosis, arterial or venous, and the pregnancy complications, early fetal loss, premature birth, and the multiple miscarriages. Laboratory criteria uh, needs at least positive one lab test on two occasions at at least 12 weeks apart. In other words, uh, you have to confirm that positive test several months later. That includes the uh, lupus anticoagulant, cardiolipin antibody, beta-2 glycoprotein-1 antibody. Let's take a look at the clinical signs of antiphospholipid syndrome. Levedo reticularis is not particularly specific to antiphospholipid syndrome, but can be seen frequently is due to capillary thrombosis, gangrene from arterial uh, thrombosis, and the early fetal loss. Mutation of methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase MTHFR gene is a hypercoagulability condition because it causes high level of homocysteine, hyperhomocysteinemia. Hyperhomocysteinemia is a risk factor for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and venous thromboembolism. The mutation of methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase gene causes deficiency of methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme, uh, which is essential in converting hyper uh, homocysteine to methionine for protein synthesis. So the uh, homocysteine level goes up high when this enzyme is deficient. But the folate or vitamin B12 and the vitamin B6 can lower the homocysteine level. But although the uh, vitamin B therapy uh, lowered the uh, uh, level of homocysteine, it didn't lower the incidence of cardiovascular disease. So we don't routinely order the uh, methylene tetrahydrofolate mutation gene test and the homocysteine level because we really don't have much to do. Uh, homozygous uh, variants associated with a neural truth defect, syringomyelia anencephaly. So the pregnant woman must take the high dose of folate. The risk of recurrence for unprovoked venous thromboembolism is 10% in a year, which is pretty high. So for unprovoked first VTE, the treatment must be at least for three months or even more. For provoked VTE by major risk, three months is sufficient. When patient has a recurrent unprovoked VTE, indefinite therapy must be considered. When cancer patient develop VTE, indefinite therapy with uh, low molecular weight heparin or direct oral anticoagulants rather than warfarin is recommended because warfarin is not very effective for uh, patients with cancer. So the anticoagulation therapy duration depends on the provoked or unprovoked nature of uh, venous thromboembolism, not by test like a hypercoagulability test results. Uh, hypercoagulability tests during the uh, anticoagulation therapy may result in false test results. For example, uh, warfarin inhibits uh, protein CNS so it can lower the level of protein CNS on patients who has no protein CNS deficiency.